But we'll get to why I've been waiting since the middle of last July in a minute. But the gospel for today begs to be acted out. So this is where I need help. So the images from John 10 keep sliding around. So just bear with me while we sort this out. To get to the images from the gospel today, we have to back up in chapter 10. So Jesus tells us that there's a sheepfold, so sheep in the sheepfold. And I want you three standing over by the font. Sheep in the sheepfold. Sheep fold. Okay. Actually, I need, I need one more. I need a gatekeeper. Riley, right here, gatekeeper. Jesus tells us that there's a sheepfold inside of which reside sheep. We're, we're good. We're good. And across the sheepfold is a gate. And the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd. And the sheep hear the shepherd's voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, Sam and Drew, and he leads them out. He leads them out. And when he's brought out all of his own, which would be Sam and Drew, he goes ahead of them, and they go out, and they find pasture. And then he calls them back, yo sheep. And they follow him into the sheepfold. And why do they follow him? Because he's the shepherd, but, and they're sheep. <laughs> and they know the shepherd's voice. Okay, freeze. Freeze. Jesus thought this image was brilliant. But his listeners didn't get it. And, oh, Jesus, I feel your pain. Because every preacher has been there. So take two. Jesus is like, okay, scratch that last image. Let's try this one. I'm the gate. I'm the gate. All the others who've come before, they are thieves. Who's my thief? And bandits, you're a bandit too. But the sheep didn't listen to them. And why don't the sheep listen to that voice? Because they don't know the voice. See, the sheep has already learned. I'm the gate, and whoever enters the sheepfold by me will be saved, and the sheep will come in and go out through me. I don't quite know how to do that, so just come out with me. And we find pasture, and we come back into the sheepfold. But the thief comes only to kill and destroy and steal. We might not want to pull him all the way down the stairs. <laughs> and then the thief would exit around that opening over there. Jesus looks at his li freeze. Jesus looks at his listeners and say, "Got it now?" No, you look blank. You look totally blank. Okay, scratch that one too. Um, let's try this one. Take three. I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd. Lays down, your sheep are alive again. Resurrection, remember we're in Easter? <laughs> the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who's my hired hand? The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and takes off, fleeing for his life. Because a hired hand does not, wow, care for the sheep and does not own the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them. And scatters them. Ooh. Wow, this is a full contact sport today. Now why does the hired hand run away? Do what? Because he's not their shepherd. A hired hand does not care for the sheep. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. 
I have other sheep who do not belong to this fold, that might be all of you, and I must bring them also. And they'll listen to my voice, so there'll be one flock and one shepherd. Everyone gets a shepherd. No one is stuck with a hired hand. No one will be left insecure, left on their own to fend off the wolves. Oh, that doesn't work. The wolves in their life. Scratch that. In the hands of someone who will abandon them at the first sign of trouble. God loves me because I'm all in with the sheep. God loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own free choice. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This is what God has called me to do. Okay, I think that my sheep and gatekeeper and you three can be seated. Thank you. I don't know how to do this today. So Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the good shepherd. Any way you cut it, Jesus loves his sheep. And his sheep love him. Jesus knows his sheep. And his sheep know him. Jesus knows their name, and his sheep know his voice. Hired hands are fly-by-night operations with no skin in the game. Jesus has all his skin in the game. His body, his flesh, his very life. Jesus has the freedom to lay his life down, but not to end it, but so that he can fall into a bigger life, a bigger yes. But for John, there's more to the story, and we get it in John 21. Shepherds don't just guard the sheep, but they have to feed them personally. After the resurrection, Jesus asked Peter three times, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And each time, Peter answers with some form of, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus replies with this progression, Then feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. And this is where last July comes in. Last July, we were on the Isle of Iona. Oh, yeah. Now, there's a couple of things you need to know about Iona. It is stunningly beautiful. It is incredibly remote, hard to get to, and rugged. It is holy ground. It's one of those places, as they say, where the veil between heaven and earth is very, very thin. And it is full of sheep. Sheep fenced in the pastures. Sheep roaming freely. Sheep in the middle of the road. Sheep in the sand traps of the golf course. Sheep in the fairways. Sheep tending the flag on the 18th green. So Julia made it her mission to feed the sheep. With handfuls of freshly picked grass, she embarked on her mission. And every time she attempted to do just as Jesus said and feed the sheep, the sheep did what? Ran away. Ran away. They scattered like water bugs as fast as they could. Honestly. <laughs> Can you all see that? Is this in the way? Okay. <laughs> Stay. That gave some away. That's okay. She ran toward them, and they ran away faster. 
And this is where I first learned that sheep are incredibly skittish creatures. It is not easy to feed sheep. They do not trust easily. You have to win their trust. Well, this went on for a full 24 hours. But Julia was in touch with her inner shepherd, and she was not to be denied. She was bound and determined to feed those sheep. This took some figuring out, though. This was going to take a change in strategy. So Julia changed her tactics. Instead of chasing the sheep, she bent down low, and she extended her hand full of grass. She got very, very still, and she waited. And she waited. And lo and behold, this one sheep, he came over to her, and she named that sheep Chester. And Chester ate right out of her hand. And I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful sight in all my life. I, realist that I am, had come to believe that it just wasn't possible to feed these sheep because they were too skittish. But Julia never stopped believing. Quite simply, it was her mission to feed sheep, and feed them she would. Even more, she would not give up until she had made that connection. And that connection involved knowing that sheep by name. Humbling when the priest kid gets the gospel more than the priest. And a little child, though not so little anymore, a little child shall lead them. Jesus is indeed the good shepherd in John 10. And we are lost without that deep trust that he has our back and can lead us to the still waters and through the valley of the shadow of death, out into the place where we can feed on the abundant life. He wins our skittish souls over by being very patient and very still and inviting us to leave our skittishness, our wariness, our cynicism that this is just one more hired hand trying to take something from us, maybe even our life. Jesus invites us to leave our skittishness aside and to join him in this stillness where we can come close, where his hand can meet our hunger, where he can feed our hungry souls. And in that moment of encounter, we hear him call our true name. And not all the names and roles and identities that the world calls us. He calls us by our soul name. Chester, beloved Lamb of God. Cindy, beloved daughter of God. Simon Peter, Michael, Judy, Alan, your neighbor's name, your enemy's name, your very own name, beloved child of God. Jesus is the good shepherd. But by the end, he commissions us to feed his sheep. Going deep in love always flows back out into the world as a feast. And so we, with Simon Peter, with Julia, have a mission to feed the sheep. But here's the thing. Sheep out in the real world, they are skittish. They don't trust us. And why would they, after all the ways that down through the centuries, we as the church have acted more like hired hands, if not downright wolves, when it comes to feeding and connecting to the sheep? No, we will have to build a relationship one sheep at a time. We will have to build trust one sheep at a time. 
When we want to cram the grass that we think the sheep need down their throats, we have to cultivate patience. When the sheep we earnestly want to feed flee from us, we have to sit down and get real honest about our methods and motivations. Is this about feeding sheep or is this about something else? We have to learn to be still first. We have to take the time to extend a hand and wait. We have to be willing to know the feel of this particular sheep. We have to learn how to call their true name, which means we better well know our true name so that they can recognize the sound of the Good Shepherd's voice calling through our own. We have to be willing to lay down our life, our agendas, our timetables, so that we and those we seek to feed can fall into that bigger life. That more abundant life that Jesus promises will be ours when we finally connect in that deep communion with another. And we must always remember that we are at one moment shepherd and at the very next moment sheep. We must be able to receive as well as give, feed as well as be fed. I learned more about the Good Shepherd and our call to feed the sheep that day last July on the Isle of Iona than I ever knew was possible. All I know is that when we slow down and that moment of connection happens, there is nothing more beautiful in all the world. Jesus is bent down low, hand extended, perfectly still. You can trust this shepherd. Make your way to him. Let him feed you from the palm of his hand. And then, with your belly full, go and do likewise. Every last sheep in this world deserves to know a shepherd who is good. <laughs>